This is McFly Angler. Starts now. To start, you will need a long shank saltwater hook like these Gamagatsu SL11s. I tie these in both size 6 and 2. We will need to bend up the eye of the hook. To do so, place it in your vise sideways like so, with just a little bit of the shank held by the vise. Then bend it upward to get about a 60 degree angle. This will allow you to use a lighter dumbbell, but still keep the fly swimming hook point up. Now place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I like this Vivas 140 power thread, and I'm tying this in brown today. Start your thread right at the bend that you just made, then snip off the waist and build a thread bump to lay the dumbbells on. A thick thread bump is important here because it sets the dumbbells further up from the hook shank, which will help ensure that the hook point stays upright when fishing the fly. For dumbbells, I like these brass 2.4 millimeter dazzle eyes in gold. Place the dumbbells on top of the thread bump and then make X wraps and under wraps to secure it into place. Also, adjust the dumbbells to be perfectly perpendicular to the hook shank. Then bring your thread down a little into the bend of the hook and then come back up a wrap or two. To further secure the dumbbells, take a little brush on super glue like this Loctite and place a dab onto the eyes like so. Now we need some small marabou in orange or grizzly orange like here. These whiting chickaboo patches work great. Select one feather and then cut out the tip of the feather to make it less square at the tip. Then stroke down the feather with your fingers to push all of the fibers forward. Tie this feather in sticking out the back of the hook about a quarter of the hook shank length. Also tie it down deep into the bend so it will be angled upright slightly. Now rotate your hook in the vise. To add some texture and also some buoyancy, we will need some deer hair. I have the strip of Primo hair in yellow, which will work great, but you could use a smaller swatch. I mean, it doesn't have to be this Primo hair. An orange, pink, brown, or any other color you find appropriate would work as well. Select a small clump of fur about this size, and then comb out the under fur and place it into the hair stacker. Now, I'm sorry for the blurry footage here. I'm not sure why my camera didn't focus. Anyway, pull out the fur and then check for broken tips. And pull out these broken tips if you find any. Now push the hair so it splits the hook bend and make sure it's sticking out about double the length of the chickaboo. With a couple loose wraps, capture the fur on top of the hook shank. Then loosely wrap your thread up the hook shank, keeping the hair on top. When you get close to the dumbbell eyes, then you can cinch down with tighter wraps. Now trim out the waist hair. Make multiple wraps over the butt ends and then loosely back up into the bend of the hook. Now you can cinch down tight to keep the hair from spinning. Now we need some crystal flash. I really like this midge flash, which is a bit finer. Cut one strand off and fold it in half. Place the tips on either side of the hair and extending out about two to three times the hook shank length from the rear of the hook. Then capture it onto your hook. Once it's secure and positioned how you want it, then snip off the waist. Now we need some rubber legs. These medium-sized centipede legs from Montana Fly Company work great. I like the speckled orange color. Cut off one leg and fold it in half. Find the measurement at the fold and then tie it in on one side of the hook shank. And then pull the forward-facing section rearward and tie that in on the other side of the hook. It can be a little tough to get your thread in between the hook point and shank here, but just keep working at it and you'll get it. 
Make sure the legs and crystal flash are positioned how you want them. Then we need some flashy dubbing. I like this UV2 Diamond Bright in root beer color. We don't need much here, just a pinch. Dub this onto your thread and then wrap over the thread wraps just below the back section of the materials there. Now we need some mono. I have this old spool of tippet that will work just fine. Cut off a generous amount and then tie it onto your hook shank. Now we need some brown soft hackle, and this whiting hen hackle is perfect. Pull off two feathers close to the base, where they're a little smaller. Then prepare the feathers for tie-in by stripping all the fuzzies off the base of the feather, and then pinch the tip of the feather and stroke down the other fibers to create a small tie-in tag at the tip. Now tie this in right behind the dubbing. Grab a pair of hackle pliers and then stroke back the fibers of the feather and start making touching wraps up the hook shank. Sometimes the feather will want to rotate and that's okay. Just do your best to keep as many of the fibers angling rearward. Capture the stem of the feather and then break or snip it off. Now wrap back up the fiber slightly to keep them all angled rearward. Now do the same thing with the next feather and try to end about halfway down the hook shank. Take another pinch of flashy dubbing, and this time a bit more than last time, and dub it onto your thread. Then wrap that dubbing noodle down the hook shank. Make sure to cover it all up until the dumbbell eyes. Jump your thread in front of the dumbbell eyes and then make a two turn whip finish and snip your thread. Now we need to make the shell of the shrimp. I'm using foam to help assist with keeping the hook point up and making it rise up in a defensive stance when sitting on the bottom. Cut a strip out of the foam about the width of the hook gap. As you can see, this strip is about the hook gap width. Then measure the strip to extend out the back of the hook slightly, less than half of a hook shank length, and cut it at the end of the hook eye. Now cut a point in one end of the foam like so, and round out the corners. And then turn it around and cut it so it narrows down a bit on both sides, but don't go all the way to the end. Then cut a wedge out of the back end to look like a shrimp tail. Now pierce the middle of the foam with the hook point so that the tail notch ends right at the eye of the hook. So I forgot to do this step, but I find it helps to cut out some of the feathers here to make the foam lay flatter. Put the fly back in your vise securely. Now I forgot to reattach my thread here, but I figured I would show this mistake. I had to back off the mono and reattach my thread at the hook eye. Okay, now let's start winding the mono up the hook shank. Make one wrap straight across the foam trying to trap as little of the feather fibers as possible. Now this can be tricky, but just take your time. Pull the mono tight and then make one wrap under the foam to position it for the next wrap. This extra wrap under the foam is what will help you wrap this section straight across. Otherwise it will wrap angled on top. Keep doing these wraps with one over and one under down the fly until you reach the dumbbell eyes. It helps to wiggle the mono when going through the feather fibers to help keep it from trapping them. When you reach the dumbbell eyes, bring the mono over the eye and then make a few wraps over it. And then pull it rearward and make a few more wraps over it to keep it from coming loose. Now you can snip off the mono flush. Make sure you adjust the foam so it's sitting directly on top of the hook shank. 
and then wrap over the tail section, laying your thread on the notch you just cut out. Make a couple tight wraps and then wrap under the foam tail before whip finishing your fly. No matter how much you try to keep from trapping the feather fibers, some will get trapped. And that's okay, just use your bobkin to pull the fibers loose. Then add some more super glue on the whip finish and over the tail thread wraps, and also adjust the tail so it's straight. You can now adjust the legs and crystal flash if you need to again. We will now want to color up the foam a bit. I've got these markers from Risen Fly and they work great. They have a fine tip and chisel tip, and we will be using the fine tip here. The colors I'm using today are the pumpkin and orange brown. I will also be using a black sharpie for the eyes. Let's start with the black sharpie. Use the tip to make an eye right above where the hook bend comes out of the foam, and then color the side of the foam also. Turn the fly around and make another eye on the other side. Then grab the brown marker and start coloring the foam with it. You can color it however you want, but I like putting some stripes and dots on it. I stripe in the gaps where the mono compresses the foam. Now sorry this got blurry here, but I also make some stripes at the head as well, in angles and such. You can color these however you want though. Now I fill in the yellow areas with some dots. Then I use the orange colored marker and make dots and stripes on the larger gaps as well. This gives sort of a mottled look with browns, oranges, and yellows from the foam to represent the brown shrimp that are common to the Gulf of Mexico. I've also tied these flies in pink as well, but get creative and use whatever color sharpies or foam to mimic your local shrimp. Last step is to train the fibers to splay out sideways. Just use your thumbs to separate them, and they should stay like that fairly well. If you really want to keep them that way, lay a dot of super glue along the split there. And there we have it, a fairly realistic shrimp pattern. This fly caught me so many reds my last trip to the Gulf, and it really outfished all other flies that day. It sinks slowly, isn't heavy, but still fishes hook point up so it won't be snagging on the bottom as often. As you all know, I am sponsored by both Dooley's Fly Fishing and Risen Fly Fishing. Risen has their own branded rods, reels, lines, hooks, and other fly tying materials at excellent prices. Everything they sell is super high quality, but they keep the cost down for you all. Dooley's offers all the name brand materials for fly tying that you might not be able to find at Risen. Their prices are also excellent. Basically, between these two shops, I can find whatever I need to tie flies and gear to fish with. And they really are the best prices out there. Believe me, I've looked. Best of all, both of these shops are offering you all a discount just for being my subscribers. So go to either www.dooliesflyfishing.com or www.risenflyfishing.com and type in McFly at checkout for 15% off of everything in their shops. By the way, I just set up a Patreon page. For as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel and get early access to my videos. On some of the higher levels, you can also get discounts on my hand-tied flies, one-on-one -on -one help with tying from me, and even suggest flies I tie on camera. I want to thank two of my newest supporters, Rod Gajardo and Will Arendt for their support. And I'm really sorry if I butchered any of your names. And I'd also like to thank all the rest of my current supporters. I really appreciate you all, whether you're a Patreon supporter or not. If you don't want to sign up for Patreon, please at least help me out by hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. Also, please share my videos with all of your fish-loving friends. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.